Hey guys, welcome to the jungle. What do I mean by that? Uh, this is probably one of the most complicated videos that I am going to record. So I'm just calling this welcome to the jungle, okay? This is gonna be a tough one, but here's the deal. Watch it twice, okay? Watch it twice because you can learn so much from this video, okay? It's gonna be difficult. It's got a lot of concepts in it, but you can learn so much. So let's get to it. Here's what we're doing, guys. We are talking about a balance of payments deficit. And as you can see, I put question mark, question mark, question mark, a balance of payments deficit. First of all, I am not talking about a current account deficit. Current account deficits are very common. The United States has been running a current account deficit for almost my entire life, okay? Uh, current account deficits are very common. And if you have a current account deficit, then that means you've got surpluses in your other accounts. Now, right now, I just wanna say something. I'm gonna mainly focus on the current account and the financial account. Those are the two major accounts of the balance of payments. There is another account um, known as the capital account. It's got a couple of things, a couple of oddball things in there. Um, and so really the balance of payments is the current account, financial account, and the capital account. But that capital account, I don't think is all that important conceptually for kids who are doing first year learning of trying to understand international um, economics, okay? So we're gonna again focus on the current account and financial account. So back to what I was saying, current account deficit, hey, no big deal. That just means a financial account surplus and the balance of payments balances. But this is saying something different. It's a balance of payments deficit, which the reason has three question marks is teachers, including me, will tell students the balance of payments will always balance, okay? So how what is a balance of payments deficit? That is a very strange thing, but it is a term you need to know. First big takeaway, guys, is it only applies to countries that have a pegged exchange rate. First thing I want you to know right from the beginning, a balance of payments deficit only applies to countries that have a pegged currency. The United States does not have a pegged currency. We do run current account deficits, okay? And then we have financial account surpluses, but we do not run balance of payments deficits. If you have flexible exchange rates, your exchange market clears, okay, the quantity supplied of your currency and the quantity demanded of your currency equal, you will have a balanced balance of payment. Now, let's get back to the countries that have a pegged currency. Yes, they can run balance of payments deficits, but here comes an incredible confusing line. But at the end of the day, they really don't have a balance of payments deficit. That's right, that's right. Even for a country with a pegged currency, they really, their balance of payments also always balances, but that's a complicated thing that this video is going to try to explain, okay? So yes, we can look at a country that's a pegged currency and say, oh, they're running a balance of payments deficit. But I want you to know, we will say that, and I'm gonna explain why we say that, but even when they're running balance of payments deficits, when we're saying that, they're actually, their balance of payments balances. And that's one of the major takeaways of this video. And again, that's why it's confusing. And many of you guys are clicking away, but I would stay with it because you're gonna learn so much. All right, so here we go. I've got this country right here. They have a peg, that P right there is peg, exchange rate peg. This is an overvalued currency. The one thing right there that's kind of difficult for students, okay? Their eyes are attracted to intersection points. They see an intersection point below this line and they want to say undervalued. Wrong, wrong, wrong. This is overvalued. What we're saying is the country is overvaluing their currency. The uh, economic realities that give us the supply and demand curves are saying really, based on fundamental economics, the exchange rate really should be here, but notice the word should, it's not. The actual exchange rate is here. This is the exchange rate. It is whatever the domestic government says it is and what they will exchange the currency at. Currencies are actually getting exchanged at this rate. Hence, this is above this. This is a overvalued currency. So the domestic currency is overvalued. And again, I'm doing the market for the domestic currency, okay? So overvalued. In that situation, when you have an overvalued, next big takeaway, guys, you have a balance of payments deficit. That is right. If you have an overvalued currency, you got to, the only person that's going to have, the only country that's going to have an overvalued currency are ones that have a pegged exchange rate. And it's only if that peg is above the exchange rate market. And when that is the case, that is a balance of payments deficit. Those two things go hand in hand. Oh, balance of payments deficit. Oh, their currency must be overvalued. Now let's understand why. Well, at the exchange rate that's actually currencies are being exchanged, what we're gonna have is quantity 
I'm hitting the demand curve, quantity demanded for that domestic currency, okay? Now, remember, the demand for the domestic currency represents credit, right? Who's demanding the domestic currency? People that want to come into the domestic country. So over here where I'm standing, domestic country over there, rest of the world. So it's, country, it's, it's people that want to come in and they're demanding the domestic currency because they want to buy maybe the domestic country's goods and services or invest in their financial markets or maybe do, doing some foreign direct investment, okay? But again, this right here, quantity demand of domestic currency, that is our credit in our balance of payments. So next big thing, we want to integrate our knowledge of the balance of payments with exchange markets, okay? Absolutely. Oh, so the quantity demanded is the credits in the balance of payments. Absolutely. Now, at that pegged rate, this is going to be the quantity supplied of the domestic currency. So let me draw that out. That quantity supplied, who's supplying domestic currency to the exchange market are people who want to go abroad, buy imports, go invest in foreign financial markets. So these are debits. Okay, now just take a look at this. Okay, so the quantity supplied domestic currency at any exchange rate, including a peg, that represents the debits. The quantity demanded of the domestic currency at the exchange rate represents the credit. Okay, balance of payments deficit. Okay, balance of payments deficit. Now, here is the next big takeaway. What we're really saying when we're saying, oh, this country's running a balance of payments deficit, is we're saying from here to right there. Okay, Right there, I'm drawing a line right there from this top part to there, this portion of the balance of payments is running a deficit. Now, let me just quickly go through the balance of payments. We have a current account and a financial account, okay? In the current account, we've got net exports, okay? Sales and purchases of goods and services internationally, right? Net exports, net foreign factor income, mainly interest and dividend payments go in here, okay? Net foreign factor income, interest and dividends. The net means it's money's flowing both ways. Net money's flowing both ways. Net transfers like remittances or it could be a foreign aid grant okay so net transfers that's my current account financial account net foreign portfolio investment basically the buying of stocks and bonds net foreign direct investment that's multinational corporations going to operate abroad or coming into the domestic country to operate there these are our major accounts of the balance of payments and when we have a deficit this situation we're really saying from here to here, we're running a deficit. But notice there's another account in the balance of payments that's gonna get rid of that deficit, okay? What is it? It is the official reserve assets, or often it will get rid of that, that deficit. Official reserve assets. Well, what are official reserve assets? They are currencies, okay? They are international currencies, okay? They are the dollar, they're the euro, the yen, the pound, and the yuan, okay? So there are five major official reserve assets. The two big ones, dollars and euros. For this video, I'm gonna focus on dollars. But anyhow, official reserve assets, those are these currencies out there for different countries, okay, big major countries or major trading blocks, okay, like the EU. So the dollar, the euro, yen, pound, and the UN. Now, again, I'm gonna focus on the dollar, okay, just to make it simple. So what would this country do who's got this overvalued exchange rate in this situation? Well, again, they've got this quantity supply greater than quantity demand, meaning they've got people that have their currency that are supplying to the exchange market because they wanna go out. They want that foreign currency. They want to go buy those imports or go invest in those financial markets. And what we're generally going to say is going to happen is the central bank in the domestic country is going to basically say, okay, I have official reserve assets, dollars, and I'm just going to hand, we're calling dollars foreign currencies in this thing, okay? So this is some other country, because remember, the U.S. does not have a peg currency, right? So the domestic country, the one that has the peg, something other than the United States, okay? So this domestic country, they've got these dollars, which are foreign currencies, but anyhow, these dollars, and they're going to hand them to the suppliers of the domestic countries who want to go out. Remember, they have domestic currency, but there's not enough foreign currency. There's not enough people coming in with the foreign currencies demanding the domestic currency to come into theirs. So the central bank hands them the dollars and they can now head out and buy those imports or go invest in those financial markets. Basically what the central bank of the domestic country is doing is drawing down their official reserve assets, but they are filling in this gap. And so when you add in this line right there, it is not a balance of payments deficit, okay? For all int intents and purposes, what they are doing is they are 
moving it like this, okay? They're shifting the demand for domestic currency. Because remember, they've got the dollar in their central bank. They go supply the dollar and hence demand, that's right, demand their own currency, buy their own currency from the people who are wanting to go out with that domestic currency, buy their own currency up, demand their own currency, shift the demand curve right there. They are moving this amount right here all the way to there, balance of payments, balances. But we wouldn't call it a balance of payments balance. If you, sorry, we wouldn't say the balance of payments is balancing, okay? If you are using your official reserve assets, okay, to make it so that your currency market clears, then what we call that is a balance of payments deficit. Let me say that again. If you're using your official assets to make your balance of payments clear, when would you do that? When your currency is what? Overvalued. When you have a situation that the quantity demanded of your domestic currency is less than the quantity supplied of your domestic currency in these exchange markets, and you use those official reserve assets to clear this, to make to bring this back into balance, basically supply those dollars, demand your domestic currency, increase the quantity demanded of your uh, domestic currency so that your balance of payments now balances, we would not say, you have a balance of payments that's balancing. We would say, oh, that country's balance of payments is in deficit and they're having to draw down their official reserve assets to bring it back in to balance. So again, like I said, balance of payments they always balance at the end of the day. There's some other things you can do when you have an overvalued currency, but all of those things bring you back into balance. Balance of payments is due balance at the end of the day, but you can have a balance of payments deficit or what is termed a balance of payments deficit, and you have that anytime you have an overvalued currency, but what we're generally gonna assume is happening when you have that overvalued currency, the way, you are, the way you are maintaining that overvalued currency is you are drawing down your official reserve assets that you have in your central bank, those dollars, you're using those dollars, drawing them down to clear that market, to bring your balance of payments, yes, back into balance. I hope that made sense to you. Seriously, watch the video twice, okay? So much is in this video to understanding fixed exchange rates, overvalued currencies, balance of payments, the integration of exchange markets with the balance of payments, and what the heck we mean by a balance of payments deficit. Hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.